Gorilla Physics. Yeah. So I'm going to make a quick video to show you how to get readings from an oscilloscope, uh, what they mean, how to use some of the dials and the functionality. This is my most often uh, uh, requested demonstration. Can you show me how to use the oscilloscope? So um, here it is. So I'm going to show you how to use the, um, the oscilloscope. It's a cathode ray oscilloscope. Don't need to worry about that. I'm just going to show you how to use it basically for the GCSE. But you're only really going to want one trace shown any time. So you're just worried about this one little box here. This is the input for the trace. Okay, this is the same. You can have two traces shown at the same time. You don't ever really need to do that at GCSE. So I wouldn't worry at all about that. This knob here is an important knob. This changes the volts per division, so the vertical scale on the oscilloscope. So basically when you're taking measurements from it, you need to know how many volts per decision. Basically, what the signal that's coming in is an alternating voltage, an alternating current sig uh, signal. That is the waveform. So whatever is coming in is an alternating voltage. So how many volts per um, division uh, affects the amplitude as seen on the screen. But you can actually take a measurement if you know how many volts each division is worth. And then lastly, this is the time base over here. So this is, if you like, the X scale. Time is usually on the X uh, axis of any graph. So again, if, you, if you're seeing one continuous line or you can't tell the difference between one peak and one trough, then you need to change the time base to make it a finer or a coarser scale. So it's that simple. So first I'm just going to show you how to plug in and use a signal generator just to show that you've got a wave trace on there. And you're going to probably be teaching this along with sound, I would imagine, or just a general waves topic. So at some point I'll turn the speaker on here to show you, and, and you can show the kids how the sound is represented by the wave here. And I, I think that's probably the trickiest thing for the children to understand, is you've taught them that sound is a longitudinal wave, and yet you're showing it as a transverse wave, but you need to make them understand this is for taking measurements. This is a machine for taking measurements of any oscillation. That's why it's a, yeah, that's an oscilloscope. Yeah. And so, an oscillation is just a movement. Absolutely. It's a repeated movement, backwards and forwards in the same path. Okay. okay. Now, um, I use the low impedance section there, which basically means it's giving us a higher signal out. Okay. You could use the, the high impedance doesn't really matter either way, but it's not actually the black and red as it is in a normal power pack because you can see their inputs. And as I said, we're just going to connect this thing, it's just it's exactly like a TV aerial used to be, but it's just got a little collar for um, sticking it firmly onto that input there. Okay, then hopefully we've got it plugged in so we can turn it on and you'll see the green dot. Nowhere to be seen. Ah, here it is. It's just uh, like again, like an old TV. You, people, <laughs> some of you may remember these. It powers up. Okay, so now I'm, I'm, I can't see where my lines finish or end here. So I'm going to change my volts per division until I can get. I can see the top and the bottom. Well, now I can see the top of my trace, but not the bottom. So it must not be centered. So I can use the Y position. No, it's still. Too many, too, too few volts per division. There we go, that looks a bit more like it. And I can try and get zero, so I've got equal above and below my zero line, my center axis there. Oh. Okay, next thing I'm going to do, I've got the X position up here as well, so I'm going to bring it so that it's basically the, the beam is tracking only across the, the screen rather than partially tracking off the way here. Yeah, does that make sense? There's a bit of the wave missing there. Okay, that's just setting it up. We haven't taken any measurements. This is what you do before the kids walk into the room. Uh, now, I, I can see I've got loads and loads and loads of waves, but I just, I'm interested in just having one wave so I can change my time base. There we go, to actually uh, make it a smaller difference. Each box is now worth less time, and I can actually see my single trace. Okay. Now if I increase the frequency now on my signal generator you can see the waves getting closer together. Well, but now actually what's happening they're not really getting closer together because there's no physical wave, no physical wavelength. What's happening is the time period is getting shorter and most, of, most for most people in 
GCSE, they'll just need to be able to recognise well, high a frequency a or a low frequency. Yeah. So now if I just go up the, this is the, on the signal generator, this is the coarse frequency and this is the fine frequency. Okay. So I'm between 0.1 1 .1 and 1.1 kilohertz. So if I'm on 10, I'm on 1,000 1, hertz. Yeah. yeah, that's simple, isn't it? So if I increase by a factor of 10, well, there you go, the number of waves per second, uh, how the number of waves in this time period has increased by a factor of 10. I can dial that down again and show that. Now I did say, now I'm up to about 2,000. Let's say it's worth allowing the kids to compare the sound with the thing they're seeing on the screen. Okay. So turning the speaker on at the same time, this is not picking up the speaker, it's still just getting the same electrical signal but you just convert it on the unit it. that the speaker is getting. Okay, so they're seeing the, the picture on the screen, it's the, just a representation of the wave that's being produced here. Okay? Yeah. That's pretty easy, I think. And, and then you can show them higher pitch is yeah. higher frequency. frequency. Now, most schemes ask them to be able to take readings from the, an oscilloscope trace. So they'd be given a picture like that and be asked to calculate the frequency, okay, or indeed the amplitude. Most likely it's going to be the frequency though. So they need to know, well, what is the time base? What is each large square worth? Well, in this case, the time base is 0.2 of a millisecond. Agreed? Yeah. So that means one, two, three-ish, yeah? Yeah. Could even go further, 3.2 maybe. 3.2 times 0.2 of a millisecond, that's the time period. Okay, the frequency is one over that. So basically, it'll be a lot simpler in the GCSE or any kind of paper, so I'm going to go down to a lower uh, frequency. I'm now on about 20 hertz. Okay, between 10 and 102, so you've got 20 hertz. But I'm going to have to change my time base so it's a bit more, so I get a full, or at least one full wavelength. There we go. Again, it would be easier for, for them to see. I would recommend just showing them this and explaining this to them only really once, not asking them to take so many readings off this, unless you've got a small group that can actually use these, or your very high ability GCSE, but actually show them the principle and give them paper copies to practice. So again, now I've got uh, one, two, basically, oh, between trough to trough, let's yeah, go. Yeah, trough to trough, I'll keep to One, two, three, four, and a half. And a half. So 4.5 times, times 10 milliseconds, which would be, uh, 45 milliseconds, um, and so I could work out the frequency from that. Yeah, it's just one divided by that. You won't, you won't need to really change this, but you can actually change, now I can change the amplitude, yeah. and they can see the amplitude of the thing rises. The amplitude on here, again, this is just changing, therefore, the, how high a voltage signal is giving out. And if I turn the speaker on, well, they're not going to hear 20 hertz, so we're going to have to go up to an audible frequency. There we go. Okay, changing so we're just looking at one or two wavelengths. If I increase the volume, the kids will see amplitude, high amplitude, high loudness. Okay, I've got to the point where I need to make it more sensitive. Okay, it really is that simple. There's, there's not a uh, GCC. There's not a lot more to it, and it's just a demonstration, so they know what they're looking at when they get asked that question in the paper. Well, the other thing to show them is that sound waves don't normally look exactly like that. Oh, uh, because we're going to use the microphone. Yeah. So we're going to do the exact same, but plug into the microphone. I'm still going to use the signal generator, but I'm just going to use it as a speaker. If I actually keep it on the exact same frequency I had. So this thing is now just sending a signal there and we've connected the oscilloscope, same port, just into the microphone. Check the microphone's on. Okay, turn the speaker on and show the microphone 
to the speaker. Well, immediately, we're not getting a very high signal out of this, so we're going to have to make it a lot more sensitive. There we go. They can see that the, the actual note this thing produces is a lot fuzzier than the wave shape that have just been shown. Okay, and this is all about the quality of the sound. But you can still see if I reduce the frequency. <laughs> lower frequency. It's very fuzzy. Yeah, but if I reduce the amplitude, I get a lower loudness, lower amplitude signal. If I reduce the loudness, I get a lower amplitude. Okay. Yeah. And then you can have them have a little play, see what kind of quality they can make. Whist whistling. Tends to produce quite a good quality sound, really. The voice is a very, very low quality, very oh God, yeah. uh, distorted kind place. of signal. Thanks for watching this video from Gorilla Physics. I really hope you've enjoyed it, and if you have, why not go ahead and subscribe? I hope you found it useful, so please tell your friends, and every like and share that we get helps us be more useful to more people.